Hi, I'm Autumn and this is the first of hopefully many videos that I post on the progress of this little project that I'm doing. Um, so I have started to make a medieval kirtle inspired dress. Uh, I followed a tutorial by Morgan Donner and I'll put the link down below if anybody cares. Um, and I'm actually making it as a Sally from Nightmare Before Christmas kind of renaissance fair cosplay. And then I have two friends for doing Jack and Oogie Boogie as well, but I am Sally. Um, so I have the lining of the dress cut out and fit and everything. And so right now I'm working on lining. Oh, look at that. Uh, I'm kind of doing an extra lining on the just skirt half. So there's the, there's the top of it, not getting any lining and that's the skirt. So this will be on the inside um, visible when, you know, when the skirt's up to the world. Um, and so I'm doing that and then I still have to make the entire patchworked outer part of the dress, which is going to take me forever, but that's okay. I intend on filming it so that you all can enjoy my pain in uh, the patchwork process. So I have to finish flatlining all of my lining pieces and I actually it's a very exciting day today because I just got I think the last of my supplies I hope I don't need to buy anything else for this dress uh, from Burnley and Trowbridge and Renaissance Fabrics so because I happened to get those on the same day that I'm filming this yay coincidences um, I'm just gonna show you everything that I got and kind of explain what it's gonna be so first up We've got handy dandy twill tape. I just bought a whole roll of twill tape because I know that I'm going to use it a lot. Anyway. Ooh. I just made the focus weird. Um, more twill tape. These ones are Burnley and Trowbridge, by the way. Um, this is actually to mark things on my dress form. You can barely see her back there. Her name is Sylvia. I'm going to mark, like, waist and, you know, all the lines on there. Um some aglets where is it there it is some aglets for my laces um surprise swatches which are actually perfect i'm literally making a patchwork dress and most of these are in colors that i would put in the dress so most of these are going to end up in the dress i'm doing it primarily in like quilting cotton because i'm just buying a whole bunch of fabric quarters and cutting it up but these will be a beautiful little addition um that's not and i think that's it Oh, I also bought their little hand sewing guides because they're adorable and my roommate also bought them. So I just bought some for me. We shipped them at the same time. And then for Renaissance fabrics, ah, hmm, beautiful sounds, aren't they? Um, I got this beautiful half inch, you can't see it lace it's adorable and i promise if it decided to focus ever nope it's not gonna focus that's fine but i'm gonna use this for um some little decorative stuff where i kind of want things to look frayed because she's a rag doll so anywhere that i want to look a little bit frayed or a little bit worn i'm going to do this instead of actually fraying my fabric because that gives me anxiety um, and then beautiful mint. Oh, that's not the color that it is. I promise you this is like a lovely mint green ribbon that uh, I'm going to use to tie up my stockings. I'm really just buying knee high socks, but I'm going to tie them up with this ribbon so that it looks like my medieval stockings because I'm not making stockings. One day, not today. Um, and then I'm also making like the, the head roll thing and so I'm kind of going to use this not quite as hair taping, but it's gonna go in my head situation. And the piece de resistance is this silk taffeta because that is the lining I already have. It's a polyester satin that I got seven and a half yards of from a fabric store here in San Diego that is closing and it was in their like clearance bin and I bought the last of it and I have enough to line the skirt and do the sleeves, but I wanted to 
bias bind my neckline and my arm size but I don't have enough to make any bias tape. So I searched long and hard to find, I just covered up my mouth, I'm sorry if you couldn't hear that. Uh, I searched long and hard to find a kind of rust colored something. I was fine with poly because I already have poly. Uh, but I found this beautiful silk taffeta at uh, Renaissance Fabrics. So I bought it, I bought a yard and I'm not gonna need that much bias tape, so uh, I'm gonna see if there's somewhere else in the dress I can put this in somehow because it's beautiful and if not then I'll just use what I need and I'll put this in something else at some point in my life because it's beautiful and I love it and I plan on buying all the things from both of these places again and it keeps cutting off the top of my head I'm new to all of this I bought a camera I don't know what I'm doing so if my audio is terrible if my lighting is terrible it's because I have one light it's right there and also my sewing room is my bedroom. So there's that. Uh, I will also be doing a lot on the floor. I don't know if I'm gonna actually record me doing anything today. I don't know. This might just be a, hi, I exist. This is what I'm doing. If you wanna follow along, great. If not, cool. You do you. No judgment. Um, but so that's what I've got going on right now. I'm very excited. Um, this is my first kind of big, any garment actually making, I've hemmed pants, I've made curtains, but like, this is my first thing that someone's gonna wear, uh, and that someone is me. Um, so I'm really excited, and so far it's going really well. I have had to change a couple of things. Oh, I guess I could tell you what I changed. Yeah, so initially I was just gonna do like a simple bodice and a circle skirt, patchwork it, connect them, call it a day. Um, but considering the fact that I never sewn anything together, I made a mock-up of a simple, 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 uh, princess themed bodice. And uh, yeah, it didn't fit, which is fine, but then I was like, I don't know how to alter patterns enough yet, because it fit my waist, but it didn't fit the bust, and so if I like had went down a size or up a size, it wouldn't have gotten me what I needed, and so I didn't know how to navigate that, and I decided this is a little bit too far out of my like expertise level, because usually when I start crafting, I definitely just jump in, and I go way above where I probably should be. Uh, and I just, I make it work, and I accept the fact that that was too far out of my, you know, novice zone. So then I went to Morgan Donner and was like, you're gonna teach me how to draft a dress. And then it worked. And I did like two and a half mock-ups. Maybe if I figure out how to edit, I will insert things, photos and like little videos that I took um, while I was sending those to a friend. So it's inside out and I didn't sew the shoulders because I wanted to make sure that the strap length was long enough. But look! It's really all- oh! This all started because- at least the rust color, by the way, in case anyone's curious. My friend found me a corset at a thrift store and I know that, you know, medieval ladies didn't wear corsets on the outside of their dresses, but I'm going to because it's beautiful. And it's a very, like, rust-colored. It's... I don't feel like grabbing it. It's in my closet. Maybe I'll put a picture in somewhere. Um, but that's why I had to find a rust-colored lining to kind of coordinate with the corset. And then I, you know, luckily found this seven and a half yards of a lining. And I think now I might be done talking. Um... Also, I will not always be dressed up like this. I just really wanted to make a good impression for like my intro. If I'm in the video again before this gets posted, I will probably be in sweatpants and on the floor because in the words of Rachel Maxey, we're, we're floor trolls. Um, I have a very small bedroom and I rent from 
from people who are that were friends it's fine but there's not really a lot of space to do you know cutting a lot of fabric anywhere and we have dogs and so it's just safer for me to do it on the floor in my bedroom but it's a very small very small space so you'll see it all at some point maybe i don't know anyway thanks if you if you want to see what's going on leave me questions and comments i don't know what you guys want to know so you got to tell me what you want to know i will i will be happy to answer um yeah okay bye hello I decided to buy a tripod because, yep, um, I am going to finish cutting out my flat lining pieces, therefore you get to watch me be on the floor in sweatpants because I'm not doing this in cute clothes. I'm definitely going to have to overlay sound because I'm going to be watching YouTube or it'll be silent because I don't know how music works on YouTube. So if it's quiet, I'm sorry, I'll just make it like super fast, I guess. I don't know. Anyway, here we go. Okay, so just, I can't see myself, uh, real quick, just so y'all know, because this is hard. Um, I'm actually pinning my two layers just straight up into my carpet so that I can cut around it with my scissors, and then I'll just pin the two layers together. I did the straight edge to itself, but... It's hard to like get your whole hand like under there to pin that and um, I'm not very good at this yet, so yeah. Okay, so here's a here's a little fun thing. It's not fun. Um, so I think I said before I'm following a lot of tutorials by Morgan Donner and because there's the, if you watch her video you'll know there's the four straight panels and then all the little triangle gores that go around the whole situation and one of the things that she, oh that's a lovely view. One of the things that she talks about is you don't want to sew your bias edge to your bias edge. You want to sew a bias edge to a straight edge, you know, and all that good stuff. So all of my muslin lining layers, interlining layers, are cut on the correct grain so that straight is going to bias or straight is going to straight, but bias is not going to bias. However, I done jacked up somewhere. So I have two gores, two gores, where the, uh, the, the poly taffeta satin, I don't know what weave it is because I don't know enough yet. Um, I have two of the triangle gores where they are going to be cut on the wrong grain. But the good thing is that their pair, like their partner is cut on the correct one. So the two that are cut wrong aren't connected to each other, they're connected to one that's correct. So like, it's okay-ish, because she also does that at one point in her video. So wow, the focus is great. It doesn't know where my face is. Um, so I just want to let you know that that's a thing that happened. And you know what? Oh well, it's, it's the inside. I don't care that much. Uh, okay, I don't know how well this is gonna go, but I'm gonna attempt to film some of the sewing part and see how that goes.
Hi. So editing autumn is actually doing the outro because I didn't, I didn't do one. Um, so I know this video was mostly time lapses and me explaining things. Um, and that's just because I wasn't prepared to make a video. So I recorded what I could and I put it in here. Either way, I'm going to do more. Um, I'm starting to record like video number two because I don't have a schedule yet. So if you're interested in learning more about how I'm doing all of this, um, the next videos I do plan on being a little bit more in depth with um, how I'm doing it, not just this is what I'm doing. So yeah. Okay, see you around. Um, Instagram, Twitter, same at is here, Autumn Elizabeth with that little three at the end. Um, okay, see you around, bye.